that previously uh, we were discussing about one of the method for finding out the profit and the final statement on the basis of details that were prepared by a concern using a single entry system and there are two main methods one is statement of affairs method and another is conversion method in the statement of affairs method you will be preparing a statement of affairs that means an opening statement of affair to identify the opening capital a closing statement of affair to identify the closing capital and once the opening and closing capital is computed we will prepare a statement of profit or loss and where we will adjust opening capital as well as closing capital along with additions during the year and any drawings during the year thereby you will get the profit for the period and we also learned about finding out the profit or loss especially gross profit as well as after adjusting certain expenses and incomes we also learned to find out net profit apart from that we also had dealt with various cases that includes preparation of balance sheet so in the last session we have learned about how to find the pro net profit or net loss and finally prepare the final balance sheet that was the first case and in the beginning i have mentioned that there are two methods one is statement of affairs which we have learned until now the second one is conversion method so let us discuss in detail the second case the second method conversion method under the single entry system a trial balance is not prepared and therefore items to be taken to the trading profit and loss account are not easily available because we are not recording all the aspects of a transaction if the profit is to be ascertained by preparing these accounts information about sales purchases expenses incomes during the year must be collected for this purpose it is essential to convert the single entry records into double entry records in fact conversion of single entry into double entry involves complete process of generalizing posting towards ledger balancing of each ledger accounts and finally preparation of trial balance but in actual practice it may be possible but for the examination point of view or from the part of our syllabus we need not have to prepare the entire generalizing preparation of ledger trial balance we need not have to do like that but instead you need to prepare a trading profit and loss account and a balance sheet so under the such situations final accounts that is trading profit and loss account and balance sheet has to be prepared directly with the whatever information available that means final accounts are to be prepared not with the help of a trial balance because we need, we didn't have any or we didn't prepare any ledger accounts so since there is no ledger accounts there is no trial balance so without the help of a trial balance you need to prepare trading profit and loss account and balance sheet on the basis of information that is scattered so on the basis of such scattered informations you have to prepare some ledger accounts and on the basis of those ledger accounts you have to prepare trading profit and loss account and balance sheet so in simple sense the conversion method means here you need to prepare trading profit and loss account and balance sheet in order to identify net profit or net loss or the financial position so you may think that how we are going to prepare trading profit and loss account balance sheet it is not possible because in a single entry system all transactions are not recorded some transactions are recorded some are partly recorded some are neglected so there is no complete record of transactions 
since there is no complete record of transaction there are there is no complete record of journals or uh, ledger accounts and trial balance only with the help of a trial balance we can prepare a trading profit and loss account balance sheet so how we are going to prepare so in this method conversion method as the name suggests conversion method that is converting the single entry information into a double entry that is not why that is why we are using the term conversion in this method as per the single entry we might have recorded some information that is information relating to cash transactions information relating to debtors creditors some informations are there but many of the informations are not available so how we are going to prepare a trading profit and loss account and balance sheet it is prepared on the base of available informations and for identifying missing informations for especially for those missing informations you have to prepare some ledger accounts that is the main concept of this method in this case you need to prepare some major important items ledger account and on the base of those ledger accounts and available information we will prepare trading profit and loss account and balance sheet that is the concept of this conversion method so how we are going to convert a single entry details into a double entry format so let us discuss some of the points with regard to that the following procedure should be adopted to convert a single entry into a double entry so let us discuss in detail each steps first step prepare an opening statement of affairs to ascertain the opening capital i hope we all know what is the meaning of this first sentence we have been dealing with the problems regarding such case once you found out the opening capital assets and liabilities should be collected partly from the books some may be recorded in the books and partly from the actual measures or verification or in sometimes you have to depend upon bills or vouchers or receipts like that and other adjustments like outstanding expenses income received in advance etc should be collected from other sources so that is the first step you have to prepare a statement of affairs to know the opening capital and assets and liabilities information is collected from available sources and also some details regarding outstanding expenses and income received in advance should be collected from other sources also these are the preliminary steps in actual practical cases we will discuss in detail how we are going to identify each and in each individual item don't worry we will discuss in detail during the practical case these are all part of the theory second step with a summary of all cash transaction a cash book is prepared i have mentioned earlier cash transactions are almost taken into consideration since all the cash transaction all or almost all the cash transactions are recorded or kept in hand we can easily prepare a cash book so that is the first and the foremost important ledger which we are going to prepare cash book this will give information about many items cash book will, we will get many items that is how much amount has been received from customers what was the payment towards the suppliers purchase and sale of assets totals of various expenses incomes so we, from preparing cash book we will get information about many items because we need items many items for preparation of trading profit and loss account balance sheet because in trading account we will be needing opening opening stock closing stock purchases sales after that in the pnl account we have to deal with indirect expenses indirect incomes and in balance sheet we need assets and liability so we need a lot of items so how we are going to identify those items that that are the steps we are going to discuss so this is the second one by preparing cash book we will get many information regarding cash transactions prepare relevant accounts to find credit purchases and credit sales previously i have mentioned that cash book is the first and the foremost ledger account which we are going to prepare once a cash book is prepared we, next your important ledger account is total debtors account and total creditors account why because in the trading profit and loss account the main important aspect we are going to need is how much was the total purchases made during the year how much was the total sales made during the year that is an important information so 
the details of the credit purchases and credit sales it can be found out with the help of dot debtors account and creditors account from debtors account we can easily get the details of credit sales for debtors only we will provide sales on credit and from the creditors account you can easily identify credit purchases so from preparing debtors account and creditors account you will get credit purchases and credit sales and one more thing here we are discussing credit purchases and credit sales in business there are two types of purchases and sales one is credit sales and another is cash sales similarly in case of purchases also there will be credit purchase and there will be cash purchase but here they are mentioning only details of credit purchase and cash purchase sales sorry credit sales where is the details of cash purchase and cash sales the details of cash purchase and cash sales can be easily found out in the cash book that is why here credit items was only mentioned cash purchase details of cash purchase and cash sales can be easily found from cash book we will discuss in detail each points during the practical case and as a part of the theoretical uh, discussion we are discussing each points don't worry about it okay next point after the above these steps you can easily calculate total sales and total purchase that is credit items can be obtained from this account and cash details can be obtained from this account so we can easily found total sales and total purchase once you found total sales and total purchase you can prepare a trial balance to check the arithmetical accuracy of book of accounts this point is actually a theory theoretical line because in uh, practical cases you need not have to prepare a trial balance in order to check the arithmetical accuracy next one adjustments of depreciation provision for doubtful debts discount received discount allowed commission received commission allowed these are many indirect items such items has to also has to be considered while preparing trading profit and loss account and finally on the basis of all these informations we can prepare a trading profit and loss account and balance sheet and try to use the full form of p and l don't use abbreviations for the time being i am using abbreviation so these are the steps that has to be followed for converting a single entry details into a double entry details or double entry format in order to prepare trading profit and loss account and balance sheet i hope you are getting the concept so next let us discuss how to calculate missing figures earlier we have discussed about preparation of various steps various accounts various ledger accounts balances in order to identify various various items so what are the main missing figures that has to be considered almost all the details almost some uh, all the details can be obtained from some of the available information but we need to prepare some ledger accounts in order to identify some important missing figures that is the area which we are going to study in detail here so calculating missing figures the main missing figures are debtors amount of debtors we need it creditors bills receivable bills payable these are the four main items that are important for preparing trading profit and loss account for identifying these four items you need to prepare ledger accounts that is what we are going to learn so let us begin with first one total debtors account i hope you all know what is meant by debtors debtors is the one who have to pay amount to us they might have bought from uh, goods from us on credit so they are liable to pay cash in return they are known as debtors persons liable to our business is known as debtors so how you are going to find the total debtors account this account is prepared to find the amount of credit sales remember each account has its purpose total debtors account is prepared to identify credit sales 
why we are identifying credit sales because preparation of trading profit and loss account begins with opening stock purchases and sales these are very important items and the details of credit sales can be obtained from total debtors account details of the cash sale can be extracted from cash book but details of credit sales can be extracted only from total debtors account that is why we are preparing total debtors account so once you found out the dot credit sales we can easily identify total sales because in trading profit and loss account we are using total sales rather than cash sales or credit sales separately you might add together these two items we need total sales for computing trading profit and loss account so total sales means cash sales plus credit sales cash sales can be obtained from cash book credit sales can be obtained from preparing total debtors account so remember that concept total debtors account is prepared to identify credit sales during the accounting period so how you are going to find the credit sales this is a format of a total debtors account i have tried to add almost all the items that might come in a question in a, usually in a question you, you may not come across a question or case where all these items will be there but i want almost some of the items might come in a case but you need to have an idea about what all items comes in the debit side what all items come in the credit side then only you can easily deal with such questions during the examination so as i have mentioned earlier the total debtors account is prepared to identify credit sales that is the main purpose but i assure you that it is not 100 percentage right because in 90 percent cases total debtors account is prepared to identify credit sales but in 10 percentage of cases or questions or in examination time you have to prepare total debtors account sometimes to find either opening balance or closing balance apart from credit sales so how you are going to identify a question that in which you are preparing total debtors to identify opening or closing debtors rather than credit sales don't worry in the question if the information about credit sales is given surely you may not doubt total debtors account has to be prepared either to identify opening balance or closing balance that is the concept but in almost all cases, 90 percent in cases, total debtors account is used for identifying credit sales. So let us familiarize various items in this account. Total debtors account, it begins with opening balance of debtors. We will write this as to balance brought down or to balance B bar D. I hope you all know the different format of an account. After that, to credit sales and in some cases there may be to build receivable dishonored dishonored situation come you have to enter the entry in this side i hope you all know what is meant by dishonored dishonored means whenever a bill accepted by the debentures is cancelled or it is not honored it's known as dishonored that is any settlement with the debtor was not successful that is known as bill receivable dishonored and in the credit side the items will be cash received from debtors if any payment received from debtors we will write it here by bill receivable received any amount from debtors with regard to bills drawn any discount allowed by us to the debtors that will be recorded here if you are providing any allowances to the debtors that will be shown here by returns inwards means by sales returns that is other term of returns inward and next one bad ups bad ups means debtors who are who have failed to repay our debts and finally by transfer to or from creditors sometimes some debtors may be transferred to creditors or exchange like that some situations we will discuss that points during the case study 
and finally by closing balance of debtors and remember in the question in an examination point of view or in the university exam you need not have to identify all these items only two or three or maximum four items or five items from this format will be there in the question here i am trying to show almost all the possible outcomes that can be come in an examination so this is an example of total debtors account so i hope you have understand the concept so remember this account is prepared mainly to identify credit sales during the period in almost every question you have to prepare a debt total debtors account if one of the information is not available if the credit sales is given if opening balance is given if closing balance is given if almost all the items is there in the question sometimes you need not have to prepare a total debtors account but in, but in most of the cases you might have to prepare total debtors account so let us uh, deal with a case or an example regarding preparation of total debtors account question from the following data calculate total debtors as on 2016 details are given debtors bracket 11 2016 that is the meaning Seventeen thousand one hundred and forty. So, what is the meaning of one one two thousand sixteen? What is the peculiarity of one one two thousand sixteen? It will be an opening date. So, anything on that opening date means opening balance. So, debtors on one one two thousand sixteen means opening balance of debtors. After that, cash from debtors. I want fifty-two thousand three hundred. That is cash received from debtors, and bad debts return of means three thousand one hundred. That means bad debts during the period. Debtors again date thirty-one twelve two thousand sixteen fifteen thousand one hundred and fifty. See, if you go through these dates, you can see that one is opening date. Definitely, the other will be the closing date. so closing balance is also given so opening and closing balance is given then surely you have to prepare a total debtors account to identify credit sales and remember in the question whether you have to prepare a total debtors account yes there is a trick easy trick ways there in the question if the totals that is opening and closing of debtors is given then surely you have to prepare debtors account in that case you need to identify credit sales credit sales is of great importance in the preparation of trading profit and loss account after that discount allowed to debtors 2400 sales returns 4200 cash sales during the year 15000 bills receivable 5600 so let us deal with how to prepare a total debtors account and identify the missing figure so on the basis of available information we can assume that the missing detail is credit sales because in this question cash sales is given so i am just as a part of a uh, discussion i am just uh, inquiring do we have to record this cash sales transaction in a total debtors account do we have to record just think about think about it during the computation i will explain the reason okay let us begin with total debtors account and on the base of the available information we can easily write down various values one is opening balance because opening and closing balance is directly given in the question so let us write down those two values is it it is an asset account asset accounts opening balance should be written in the debit side so to balance brought down 17140 because it is as on 11 2016 closing balance is 3112 2016 so balance carry down 15150 so let us discuss each items next one cash from debtors where will you show see this is a format See cash received from debtors. It is shown in the credit side. So by cash, fifty-two thousand three hundred. Cash received from debtors. The entry will be cash account debtor to debtors. So in the debtors account, we will write down by cash. 
I hope you all know the journal entries and how to convert a journal entry in and post it to a ledger. If you have any queries, go through your previous, previous means in your plus one and plus two account index. If you have any, still have any queries or uh, doubts regarding the basic aspects, don't worry, feel free to ask. We can clear it out. So, cash from debtors is recorded. Next one, bad apps return of 3100. That is bad apps during the year. See, this was the format. Can we, can, where can we see bad apps? See, bad apps. So, buy bad apps 3100. Next one, debtors closing we have written. Discount allowed. See, discount allowed is here. You have to think like that. Thing means items or amounts that increase or decrease adapters. Discount allowed means our the amount of adapters are decreased. So it will be shown in the credit side of an account. Whatever items or amount that increase that cause an increase in debtors will be shown in the debit side. Whatever items or amount that cause a decrease in the value of the debtors will be shown in the credit side. I hope you all know the basic rules and concepts for the time being. I am just mentioning only. Next one, sales return 4200. That means some products are, it may be not satisfied by the consumers or it may be uh, faulty goods. Anyway, the debtors has returned back our goods. So whenever they are returned back, the, deb the debtors are no longer liable to us. So that the amount of debtors are reduced. So see, it will be in the credit side. Where is it? returns inward returns inward means other name of sales return so by sales return 4200 next one cash sales that was a question i have asked before the preparation of this total debtors account do we have to record this transaction in this account we are preparing debtors account so whenever a cash sale is there whether a debtor is formed or not think like that in a cash sale whether a debtor is formed or not no in a cash sale there is no debtors because they have paid the amount on point of sale so there are no debtors so in a debtors account cash sales is not recorded cash sales is recorded in the cash book because it is a cash transaction so it is not recorded remember that next one bills receivable 5600 that is bills receivable may be received from consumer so it is shown here so i hope we have recorded all the items now it is an account so you need to balance it and from the initial glance it itself we can see that this account will not go tally this side will have a, a bigger value compared to this one so we will write down the top by taking the total of this side and show the amount in both sides of the account that is how you have to balance a account so here the total is 82,750 since it is a bigger value compared to the opposite side value you have to show the amount in both the columns and take the, you just go through the amounts in this side it will not get tally so there is a difference of a certain amount that amount can be considered as credit sales during the period so this is how you have to prepare a total debtors account here we have shown a format and on the base of format only we have discussed the case but in actual practice there will not be any format showing or format discussion you have to familiarize these individual items in the total debtors account so this is how you have to prepare a total debtors account. So in main you will come across in different cases, but practical cases, essay type questions where you have to prepare ledger like this one. And in essay questions you have to prepare ledger accounts of this this category around three to four ledger accounts has to be prepared prior to the preparation of training profit and as account and balance sheet. So you have to be very familiarize the concept and steps of each account i hope you have understand all the concept of total debtors account or how to identify credit sales remember sometimes in the question credit sales may be given in that case opening balance or closing balance will not be given you have to identify that amount I hope you understand the concept and again one more thing that is the most important thing now we have found only the credit sales 
in the question cash in fees given why we are preparing credit on uh, debtors account in order to identify credit claims why we are identifying credit claims in the training profit and loss account you have to show total sales total sales means cash sales plus credit sales so finally you need to identify the total sales if in the in a short answer question if it doesn't mention about identify total sales you directly write down total sales equal cash sales plus credit sales cash sales is given 15000 credit sales is 65610 so the answer is 80610 So this is how you have to prepare a total debtors account and identify total sales. So you have to follow the same pattern in case of total creditors account, where the items and the nature of each individual payments will be different. Here debtors, the nature is different. So likewise in creditors also the nature is different, but the procedure is almost similar. In that case also you need to prepare a total creditors account in order to identify credit purchases. and once you found out credit purchase you have to find total purchases we will discuss about the credit purchases or computation of total creditors account in the next session so please go through all these theoretical aspects and format and familiarize each of the individual items and the pattern if you have any queries with regard to the topics which we have discussed or any of the basic concepts regarding accounting feel free to ask queries you are learning the financial accounting for the first time so there may be some of the basic things you might have missed in your plus 1 classes or plus 2 classes feel free to ask any doubts with regard to financial accounting not only the topics which we are discussing anything regarding financial accounting relating to the plus 1 plus 2 anything so just go through it if you have any queries please let me know we will discuss about the further cases in the next session